You're watching Pass the Wire TV. Paige Murray, thank you so much for coming on Past the Wire TV. It's absolutely a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Um, a, a, a lot to talk about. Uh, we'll get to Rosie in in in, in, <laughs> in, in a minute. Uh, but I've got to say something because you you know you're married to a you know what is it eight time champion? Yeah, world, nine time world champion. Nine time world champion. I always make the same comment about about rodeo cowboys and i do it when people start talking about how tough oh nfl players are the toughest athletes in sports and there's a i'm like have you ever watched a rodeo i mean <laughs> i don't i don't i mean nobody's tougher than those guys you know i mean it's just i i, I don't know how they do it so yeah, yeah the uh, professional bull riders the pbr my husband was a co-founder and it, their tag is the toughest sport on dirt and it's true. <laughs> I, know, not- I, I believe it. I, I, I watch it. And my, one, one of my few claims to fame is at the Breeders' Cup a couple of years ago, I'm sitting in a restaurant at Keeneland and I spot a couple of tables over a party. And you ever look at somebody and you know you know them, but you're not quite sure who it is. Yeah. I'm like, that's somebody I can't put. And then it hit me all of a sudden, tough heat of it. Oh. I went over and he knew who I was. He has that you're that guy from Past the Wire. I watch your shows. So we took a picture together and I'm like, wow, Tough Edelman knew who I was. I was going over to say hello to him. So I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, they even named a guy tough. Do you, oh, actually, that's cool. you, know, do you get I don't know how you get tougher than that, but yeah. uh, um how is it being married to 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 somebody that's in that life and in that sport? Is it like like anguish every time they're competing? Oh gosh. I, you know, um, I met Ty after he retired from bull riding riding Bronx. I can't imagine what it would be like. I know I wouldn't want my kids to do that. Um, or, you know, my, uh, stepson, he's 13 and he's not interested in, uh, that he plays drums and then my daughter, she, I would never want her to ride bulls. So I can't imagine how stressful that would be and scary, but I guess when you, when your child loves something like my husband, he, he thought about it 24 seven. And he said, he doesn't even remember when he decided he wanted to be a cowboy. He just always has wanted to be. So I guess you have to support them when that's, it's their dream, but what a dangerous dream. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Really, really, really is. And you've got a little bit of a a, a horse racing uh, Mm -hmm. connection as well. Tell us about that. Yeah, I pulled a picture up for you. Um, So my husband's dad, his name is Butch Murray. There's a picture of him in 1958. He's standing at the horse's hip. So um, he my husband comes from, uh, he's a fifth generation cowboy. Okay. And his um, great uncles and his uh, great grandpa worked on the 101 Ranch in Oklahoma and the Wild West Show. Okay. When that went bankrupt right after the Great Depression, uh, around that time, um, so my husband's great grandfather was named um, Walter Schultz, George Walter Schultz, and he had a his brother Guy Schultz. They went in when the ca- U.S. Cavalry disbanded. They were auctioning off other horses, so they went and bought a stud called Wiz K and two brood mares and started um, a horse racing um, co- company or. Uh, that that's what the business they got in. Right. So, um, uh, Ty's dad, he was, uh, raised by his grandfather and he went around to all the races with them and he wanted to become a jockey. He's not very tall about five, two, but he was still a little bit heavy and I think he was like 11 or so. And he was kind of starving himself and he was exercising a racehorse and, uh, didn't have the energy to gallop and fainted and p- fell off. Okay. So he decided then he wasn't going to be a jockey. Uh-huh. But he was going to be, um, be a trainer, exercise him, and he got all the horses that no one else could uh, ride or wanted to or, uh, you know, couldn't get them in the gate. And they'd send him to Butch, that's his name, and uh, he would he would get them ready to go for race day. And then he became a starter on the track. And right. my husband grew up. Um, he'd spend his summers in New Mexico. 
Um, and then as winters, they lived in Arizona and they would travel around to the different racetracks. And that's uh, kind of he grew up on the racetrack. Wow. Interesting. So it's it, it, it's funny. I thought that our only connection would be kind of that we're, we're both animal lovers and 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 you know here we have a, a, a racetrack connection so that's 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 kind of cool but um getting getting you wrote a book rosie's yep. wild ride yep uh not giving too much away and I, ha I haven't had a chance to, re to read it yet i certainly will um i know rosie is a clydesdale yes uh which i don't know anybody that doesn't love the clydesdales yeah. you, you know they're just unbelievable just magnificent yeah. to, to look at like i can't imagine what owning one is like my wife wants a frisian oh. uh, i've been successful in talking her out of it uh, <laughs> for the past couple of years but i'm pretty sure i'm going to lose that argument it's just a matter of when yeah <laughs> uh, so there's probably a frisian or two in our in our future uh but you know we would have to find a a good place to keep it close to the house and um, there are a couple but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But how did you get to uh, to own own Rosie? So, yeah, so I wrote a children's book called Rosie's Wild Ride. And um, it is based off our real life Clydesdale Rosie. I'll show you a picture of my daughter, Oakley. They are right here in the back. And there's Clydesdales and rodeo flags. So gotcha. that's Rosie right there. So we own a two 2,800 acre uh, cow-calf operation in Stephenville, Texas. So we have a wow. ranch here. And so we have a lot of cow horses, but um, my husband, he likes a challenge. And uh, so he decided he wanted to get a Clydesdale because they're known as gentle giants for my daughter um, and me to ride to keep us safe. But he wanted to experiment and see if he could make a, a plow horse into a cow horse. Um, so he just, uh, you know, he uh, he loves he loved the breed, knew they were gentle. And so he started looking. He loves he's very passionate about horsemanship. And he studied that for like the past 30 years. Sure enough, 30 days later, he took a, a Rosie to a branding. She became a cow horse at the ranch. And then I was just inspired by um, her Rosie's story. And then uh, with my daughter, some things she'd done at the ranch ins inspired me to write the story. And so a, a theme of the book is um, finding strength in your differences. And Rosie's so different than all of our other quarter horses here. Right. Um, she's bigger and slower and uh, strong and brave, um, powerful. But they really were, you know, Clydesdales are born to pull carts. That's what right. they felt as uh, cart horses. And so I started thinking, you know, what would it be like to be Rosie and see all these other horses and be so different? Um, and then so uh, she and Oakley started uh, doing the play days and the barrel racing and poles and all of that. Uh, they started competing and made a great team. Um, and then one day, Oakley, we were uh, down at the round pen and she was three and a half, my daughter, and she said she wanted to get on Rosie by herself. And I said, do you think you can get on that big horse all by yourself? And she said, what if I can? And uh, so that became a big theme in my book, you know, developing that growth mindset and self-confidence. Um, and so she's kind of taunted by a barn cat, Rosie, and told she's too big and too slow. And then they have to, you know, they fail at a few of the events that they try in, in their dream to be rodeo stars. There's our barn cat laughing at her for her dream. But right. um, she, they fail at a few of the events because she truly is not made for the rodeo events. Um, but then a runaway bull get, escapes, a rogue bull, and she's maybe the only horse big, strong, and brave, brave enough to save the day. So that's kind of the themes in the book. And uh, it was so fun and special to write and just to share it with my daughter. Right. Is it, is it necessarily a children's book or is it something that anybody would enjoy enjoy reading? It is a children's picture book. It's based, um, it's written for four to eight year olds. But honestly, I think the themes in it are good reminders for adults too. Because how many times do we as adults think, what if I can't do something? You know, we worry about um, failing instead of being curious and filled with wonder about what if we can, what if we are successful? And right. so I think, you know, I, I love children's books, but I also have a six year old daughter and love to read through them. But I think um, I think adults would enjoy looking through this and the themes that it could provide for, you know, adults, too. And good reminders for them as well. I've heard that the pictures and, and, and illustrations are, ph are phenomenal. Oh, thank you. The um, illustrator is Kristen Humphrey, and she's from East Texas. And she grew up loving horses and animals. And I'm so glad. uh you know, that I got to team up with her 
because she just did an incredible job and you could tell she put her whole heart and soul into this book and there's me and Oakley and my husband Ty and then that's my stepson Kay so the family made it in there and um, she just did an incredible job. I hope it captivates kids and inspires them. I'm sure it will. Uh, what was Rosie's life like before you got her? Where, where, where did she come from? She came from Express Ranches in Oklahoma and they breed um, Clydesdales and raise them kind of to pull uh, wagons and parades and things like that. Right. I mean, they're known, obviously, for the Budweiser commercial. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's kind of, and the Super Bowl ads, that's kind, yeah. of, kind of what made them them, them favorite. What are, they, what are they like? I mean, I, I've never... Yeah. I've seen them up close, but I've never actually got to inter interact with, with one. Yeah, they are. They're majestic. Um, they honestly, they remind us a little more of like an elephant, really. They have a really kind eye and they um, they're just they're uh, honest, trustworthy horses. They're dependable and reliable. Um, when my husband got her, she was so easy to train. Um, you know, he, he documented her training on Facebook and that's where people kind of fell in love with her. He documented the first 30 days that he trained her and worked with her. And, um, you know, when we went to pick her out, he's like, I don't even really know what I'm looking for. You know, it feels like I'm looking at elephants, but, uh, they're, uh, she's, she just, you know, I kind of lost my confidence after I became a mom. I grew up riding, but I, I became scared once I became a mom, I guess, cause I have a little daughter that depends on me to take care right. of her. So I don't want to get hurt. And she's really helped me get my confidence back. Um, you know, their movements are slower. Uh, you think they'd be rough, but like she has the smoothest, best trot, I guess, because their animated feet makes them look like they'd be rough and bouncy. But it's so smooth to ride her. And um, she doesn't like the lope. She's kind of lazy, but she'll she'll do it for you. But she's just a willing, honest, you know, wonderful, wonderful horse that has you can tell they have such a gentle spirit. I would imagine it feels like you're on top of the world when you're sitting on a, on a Clydesdale or does. around on one of those. You feel very powerful. <laughs> you can tell they're magnificent animals. Has she developed a bond with Oakley? Yeah, yeah, she has. And um, she takes care of her. You know, we had him in the round pen and there was a tarp on the ground. And, right. and Rosie went up to it. And he, a lot of horses, you'll know, step on them and scare themselves. But she right. just kind of, she's, she's smart. She thinks. So uh, she started pawing at it and then just walked right across. I was like, whew. But uh, she and Oakley have a beautiful bond, too. And um, she and I have a great bond. And she and Ty have a, a great bond. She's just a special horse to have on the ranch. Right. Now, let me um, let me, let me ask you this. She, um, what, what was the story with the, with the bull that got away? Um, that was just kind of, I made that up for the book and then oh, this goes so crazy that I wrote that for the book. And then a few weeks later, there was a bull who escaped out of, uh, the rodeo arena. I think it was in California or something and hospitalized somebody. Right. Um, but I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, I mean, I didn't think that really happened, but I guess it can happen, which can be scary if they jump, they yeah. jump into the stands or, uh, you know, escape through a fence or something. But I just... Kind of, I was like, wonder what what would Rosie be good at at the rodeo? Like, what would her strengths be with her size? And and I was like, a, like a pickup horse, you know. Um, I was like, that was that'd probably be what she'd be, you know, great at. Are the clowns? Is that like one of the toughest jobs to be one of those rodeo clowns? Yeah. So um, in the PBR, they are um, they're called bullfighters. Okay. And so some the clowns, there might be a clown to entertain, but the bullfighters, they have really tough jobs. And um, it's really cool to watch them work. The PBRs will have three guys and they work as a team and um, they kind of make a triangle around the bull and they'll distract them and keep the cowboy safe. That's their job to keep them safe as they land. And then the pickup man will be on a horse or they call it the safety man in the PBR. Right. But um, if the bull is not wanting to go out, uh, of the arena or something, you know, he'll go rope him and pull him out of the arena. Yeah. You know, I, when, when, when I, when I watch the PBR and I see some of the spills that those guys take, I'm like, well, that'd be it. They just kind of sweep me up and cart me away to the, to, to the morgue. And those guys get up, brush themselves off and get right back on another bull. I, I know they're so tough. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I, I literally, don't think I'd get up from about 90% of, of, of those spills and those guys get up and just walk it off. It's nothing, you know, Maybe every time right. I get hurt, I try and think of that. And like, 
I kind of pull strength. I'm like, I think of it like a bullfighter. Just walk it off. It's nothing, you know? Yeah, yeah. My husband, he's like getting off, learning to get off safely is a big part of staying safe in bull riding because you're actually the safest on their back <laughs> right? When you, when you come off. And um, the bull, it, some of them are aggressive. Some of them aren't. It just kind of depends on the bull's nature and um. They're not real. They're not trying to hurt you most of the time. They just want to get out, you know, do their job and go out. You know, it's a fascinating thing that I never really knew about until a couple of years ago. But, you know, in 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 in, in the racehorse business, you breed and, you, you, you know, there are genetic lines that kind of follow each other, like speed horses um, tend to breed other speed horses and grass horses tend to breed other grass horses, stamina breed stamina and, 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 and things like that. And, and just genetically you can trace it, trace them down. And I never knew that bulls were the same where, you know, bulls that like turn to the left have a tendency to breed bulls that like turn to the left and all these little, you know, genetic idiosyncrasies that follow themselves in, in, in bloodlines and bulls that were tough to ride breed bulls that are also tough to ride, which I never knew and I'm fascinated by. Yeah, there's a whole Bucking Bull Breeders Association now that um, does that. And they've, man, they've created the most incredible athletes in these bulls. It's like nothing you've ever seen when you watch some of these bulls buck on TV. Right. What do they weigh, those bulls? We uh, average 2,000 pounds or so. Yeah. And what about what about Rosie? What about Clydesdale? I think, so she weighs, she, she is a smaller Clydesdale. I'd say she weighs between 1600 about 1600 pounds probably but they can weigh up to i think it's 2300 pounds um i got some facts in the back of this book for kids that they'll find so interesting about clydesdales it says they can weigh up to 2400 pounds that's as much as a small car so right. they can be really big but she is one of the smaller ones which is why my husband picked her he's like wanted one that we could get up on and ride you know at the ranch he thought she'd be a little more handy being smaller Right. Did you know that Oakley was going to wind up riding her? Yes, we did. Okay. He got him. He got he got Rosie for Oakley and I to ride. <laughs> yeah. Now, if people want to get their book for 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 you, you know their children or want to check it out themselves, where where would they go to find it? My um, I have a blog and it's bootsandbiscuits.com. Okay. And slash Rosie's Wild Ride, and that's I have made it easy to find some of the retailers that sell the book, but it's sold wherever books are sold. Um, so you can just Google it and pick the best place where you want to buy it from. But I have some listed on my website, Boots and Biscuits. And then if on my website, uh, there's a on um, Boots and Biscuits at, or um, there's an activity kit for Rosie's Wild Ride that you can it's free. You can print it off and there's some fun activities that the kids can do and keep them entertained for a little while. Oakley's already done this one, <laughs> but it just kind of goes with the book. Now, is this your first book? Yeah, this is my debut children's book. Okay. Always um, love to write. And what, was, what was it like, the experience of, of actually yeah. writing a book? It wasn't until I became a mom. Um, you know, I've always loved to write, but I started reading books to her every night. And I was like, oh, I would love to write a children's book. I was just immersed with it. And so I wanted to start writing it. But it's been a highlight of my life. It's been so much fun. I originally started writing it. And, um, you know, I didn't know anyone in the publishing agency. I didn't know any literary agents or anything. And I said, well, I'll try to self-submit to some smaller publishing houses that take unsolicited manuscripts. Maybe I'll get an offer back. Um, and if not, I'll just self-publish it. I'll find a local illustrator or something and self-publish it on Amazon um, just because it was a passion of mine. Right. Um, but then it happened uh, after I wrote the story. I was at Oakley's gymnastics class and um, this lady was there and she had just moved to Stephenville with her husband. She overheard me on the phone talking to my husband, Ty, about the book. And she said she was actually used to be a literary agent and she would love to help me. And so I sent her all my info and she said, I'd actually like to represent you. Her name's Esther and she's okay. become a great friend and my literary agent. And so we got um, an offer from Zonder Kids, a division of Harper Collins uh, to publish the book. And it's just been the most fun experience from um, working with the editors. Uh, Catherine and Mary have been so great helping me with this and then uh, picking out the illustrator and working with the art director and now the marketing department as the book's coming out. And then, um, you know, I was hoping it was so much fun when I wrote the book. I was like, please don't let this be the only book. I just I want this to be a career like this is so much fun. And I just found a true passion. And so uh, the book's done so well with pre-orders and been so successful already that there's two other Rosie books in the 
in coming down the line. <laughs> oh, so you're going to stick with that theme. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you're going to write another one. So now you kind of answered that. You're yes. going to stick with Rosie. Yeah. Well, well, for now, yes. And then um, I've written a bunch of stories about all of our ranch animals because I have a funny farm. And I just feel right. like they teach so many wonderful lessons. I feel like growing up on the ranch teaches children so many incredible life lessons. It hard does. work and responsibility. No, no question. Yeah, no yeah, question respect for it. Mother Nature, the circle of life and death. Um, just so many great things. So I've written a bunch of stories. And um, so we'll, we'll start with keep the Rosie series going. And I hope more will just keep coming on down the line. Wow, that, that yeah. that's great. I guess I can't complain. I, I have 11 dogs. No, oh, you do? Just seems like an awful lot to me. Yeah. You know, um, most are, are, are rescues except yeah. for two and going to be three. Yeah. Uh, I have a, I have a, a, a champion Connie Corso line dog and a champion oh. Rottweiler, and I'm getting a champion Dogo Argentina. Um, but the rest of all are all rescues uh, of every shape and size you can yeah. imagine, from Chihuahua to Pitbull yeah, to everything, everything in the middle. And uh, there's 11 of them, and that's quite a bit for a normal yeah. house. There's not a farm <laughs> or a ranch, you know. So that is uh, awesome. We yeah. have six cats, three dogs, and several of ours are rescues too, or strays that showed up. I saw one of your dogs on on yeah. on um, on the blog. Pete. At first, I thought he was a ball bell, but now I think he's a Great Dane. Um, I believe he's a black, a yellow black mouth cur. Okay. He has the. He's a little. His his face kind of looks similar to a Great Dane, but they they believe he's a yellow black mouth cur. He was a stray that showed up on the ranch, and he has all the qualities of black mouth cur you know they're bred to hunt hogs right um and so he he definitely has all the qualities of the black mouth cur right so you have animals that just show up on a farm and yeah not as many as you would think we're pretty out here but he just showed up and he's been the best dog we've ever had right yeah that's great, that's great. We'll go to the animal well, shelter and adopt cats and uh -huh. i got rabbits and a rat from a rat rescue. <laughs> there are rat rescues. I didn't okay. even know that existed. Yes. <laughs> wow, um, that's great. I, I I love animals, and we I, we we do a lot of rescue, a lot of fostering, and and and, awesome. and whatnot. So, um, that's great. Listen, um, I wish you all the best with um, Rosie and the future Rosies that are going to come out. Uh, and I I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. I you, you know you're not. The typical horse racing yeah. person that we get on but like i said there is that connection mm -hmm. um and uh you know i'm glad I'm, I'm glad you came on and hopefully people will uh will will enjoy meeting you and learning about about rosie yeah thank you much so much for having me on we're um big fans of the horse racing industry with the history uh and the family and so it's really nice to be on your show do you ever get to go go to any of the big races or or no if we're around, yeah, we try to. I'd love to. Um, it's tough. I listen. Yeah. <laughs> so many people ask me, "How come you don't go here?" I said, "I got eleven dogs." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be fun to do, though. Right. Try to make it to some. I know, especially now that Oakley's getting a little bit older, <laughs> she would love that. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, again, uh, thank you so much, Paige, for coming on the show. Um, I'm going to definitely read the book myself and. Uh, if nothing else, look at look look at those pictures. They look they look phenomenal. Yeah. Really, I think they did a great a great job with the pictures. So, thanks again, and all the best to you, um, your husband Ty, and his re re retirement, uh, Rosie and Oakley. Yeah, and all, so all, everybody on that farm. Everybody, thank you so much for having me on. Okay, thank you so much, and I'll put a link to your blog um, in the comments so people have an easier okay. time finding the book if they wanna if they wanna check it out. That sounds awesome. All righty. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. They're off in the 2023 First Crop Sires race. Maximus Mischief makes the lead with the most two-year-old maiden special winners by any sire. On the backstretch, Matoli and Omaha Beach close the gap with stakes performers from coast to coast. Vino Rosso finds his best and leads on the turn with four grade one colts on dirt. But it's Matoli with his third TDM rising star. Your champion freshman, leading an impressive Spendthrift Superfecta. Tracking trips from Pass the Wire and the Pick Six King, John Stetton. As your handicapping partner, John is your second set of eyes on the past performances 
replays, numbers, trips, and more, helping you find new angles and plays others miss. Each week you get expert analysis, smarter ways to press your opinions, and the keys to cashing bigger tickets. Tracking trips from past the wire. Give yourself an edge and partner with a pro. Get a second set of trained, experienced eyes. Join today. Membership has its benefits. Nobody does it better.